So I was working with Kristen today in the eLearning Heroes forums, and she had a storyline interaction that she was wanting to build where she wanted to display um, several attributes to the learner, like we see on this slide mock up here. And once they had made their selection, she wanted to show kind of a summary of what they had picked. The kicker was, though, she wanted them to only pick a certain number of attributes. If they went over that number, then they would have to go back and fix that and you know select only the number that she was allowing. So Kristen, here's um, how I would go about building the project that you described. And I didn't build out all 30 of the attributes just for the sake of time. I've only got six here, but I think you'll get the idea when you see um, how to build this. Um, and in this case, the maximum that I want the learner to pick is five. So that's why this message says five up here. So I was able to do this with just one variable. It's a number variable. If we click on our project variables here, you can see it. It's called attributes selected, and I set the initial value to zero. Okay, and then on each of my buttons here, I have two triggers. You can see them over here in the trigger pane. And the first trigger is going to adjust that variable by adding a value of one when the state of the button becomes selected. Okay, so when the learner clicks on that button, we want to add a value of one. If they if they unselect it or deselect it, we also want to subtract a value of one. So that's what this trigger is for. We adjust the variable by subtracting one when the state of that button becomes not selected. Okay, so I did that for each of the buttons here. And then um, another thing I did to each of the buttons is I gave them all um, a selected state. It looks like this with the green outline around it, just to make it super clear to the learner when they had actually selected something. And then right up here is where I display the tally. So this is going to show how many um, attributes the learner has picked so far. Now, Kristen, you mentioned that you wanted the learner to only be able to choose a specific number of attributes. And if they had done that and they click Submit, this button right here, then we want to show them a summary. And if they didn't, if they picked too many, we want to show them a warning message instead. So down here in the lower right in the layer pane is where I set up those two situations. This layer I called max reached. And this is what they see if they overshot. So if they selected more than five of my um, attribute buttons, they're going to see this. They'll have to click OK and go back and you know fix this situation. The other layer is called summary. And this is what they see if they did what they were told and selected five or fewer of the attributes. And what I did here, if we look up here in the trigger panel, is I added a layer trigger for each of my six buttons. And the trigger is basically just changing the state of the button to hidden when the timeline of this layer starts, but only if the learner had not selected that attribute button. So basically it's just causing Storyline to show a filtered view. We're saying change the button to hidden when the timeline of the layer starts if the learner has not selected that button. So we're filtering out the buttons that they didn't choose and only showing them the ones that they did. So this is a little bit of work because it means you need to make that same trigger for every button. And the other thing you'll need to consider is what if they decide to click this button that says go back, like if they want to go change their mind and select other stuff? Well, in that case, we don't want to keep those hidden buttons hidden anymore, right? We want them to be able to go back and maybe select some of the attributes that they didn't pick the first time through. So we need to make those visible again. And that's why in this trigger pane, you can see I've got another set of triggers, one for each button that basically just tells Storyline, change that button back to its normal state if it's currently hidden. That way when they, when they do go back, they're going to see all the buttons that they're supposed to. One more thing on this uh, summary layer is if we click on this Properties button, I also marked the box to prevent the learner from clicking on the base layer when this layer appears, because I don't want them clicking on those attribute buttons or you know selecting or unselecting them while they're viewing this. That would mess up the, the tally. So let's go ahead and preview this, and we'll see how it behaves. So I'm going to go ahead and select five different attributes here, the, which is what we're supposed to do. We hit Submit. And then we get our feedback. Here's what we selected. You can see that the one I didn't select is no longer here, so I'm seeing a filtered view. And I could confirm my choices by moving ahead, or if I want to, I can go back. So let's click Go Back. When we do that, we see all the buttons are restored again, right? And I can select or deselect, and my, my count is reflecting the correct number here. What if I select too many, like I just did? If we hit Submit, we're going to get that warning message saying we can't do that. So we click OK, we unselect at least one, then we hit Submit, and now we get the result that we want. So I hope that helps, Kristen.